Today I'm going to teach you how to say the date and write the date in British English. It might seem tricky at first, but it's not so difficult. And you will learn today how to say it perfectly, how to write them perfectly. So let's go. So I'm Dan and you're watching ispeakspokespoken.com and we're going to have a look at written dates first. So as you can see here, we've got the date written and in English, in British English, we always do day, month and year. I always have to change things on the internet if I've got something in American because it doesn't make sense to me. But if, as a British person, I always think of day, month, year first. And it's the same spoken, it's the same written. As you can see here, we have 3rd of March 2024 or 2024. You can say it different ways. When you're writing, you don't put the. But when you're speaking, we use the. So when I write it, I write it like this. When I say it, I say the 3rd of March 2024. The same with the next one. 21st of June 1985. When I say it, I say the 21st of June 1985. 14th of November. Let's just have a look at the pronunciation. So the O sound. And then the stress in V, VEM, November. And this is our schwa that we know this uh sound. November. 2000. Year 2000, we don't say 20, zero, zero, we say 2000. Okay, again, when we say it, the 14th of November, 2000. Dates can also be written in an abbreviated form. And in fact, this is where you'll, how you'll find it on the internet. When you're filling in forms and when you're doing something official, you're, you'll be expected to use this forward slash. So actually, um, this is a great way of doing it. We always use the zero, if it's under 10, and we always use the, the forward slash on internet applications. So you'll usually find, let's just show you like this, that this is the expected format. So you have two figures, two figures, and then four figures. So for example, if it's March, you'll need to do 03. But if it's September, then you'll be, oh no, not, not September, if it's something like um, November, then you'll have to use 11 like this. So you won't necessarily do this because it's not really, it doesn't really look so good. Okay, just do that so you're clear. And then of course say of June and then 2024, for example, okay? Now, it's okay to use a hyphen and lots of people do when they have something written but I will tell you that if you're using an internet form, it does usually expect you to use the forward slash. So something like this as well. So this is 14th of the 11th, 2000. And actually when you say it, you will say it like with the, with the, so 14th of the 11th, 2000. But we never write these. It's always like this, okay? So just to let you know, that's how we do it kind of in, a, in an abbreviated form. Okay, so saying dates. When we say dates and when we speak them, we use ordinal numbers, so like first, second, third, fourth. So let's just have a look at what we've got here. So, for example, we write like this, as I mentioned before, but we say the 1st of January, okay? You write like this, you say the 1st. And for example, the next one here, 2nd of February, we say the 2nd of February when we say it but we write it with ordinal numbers like this, okay? Um, we have 3rd of March, the 3rd of March, and then we have 21st of June, 21st. So if it's a, a larger number, then we use the same ending as we would for this one here. Just let's show you one thing, that you'll notice these endings here, okay? There are four of them. Now, there are only four, so all you have to do is remember four, and most of them only happen in the first, in one, two, three, four. So let's have a look. So we have first, there you go, second, third, and fourth. Now this one will go fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, okay? And you won't see, we won't see ST and ND and RD until you get to 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 31st, 32nd, 31st. 33rd, can you see? So, um, these are the only endings. So one, two, three, and four. That's what you need to remember. 
Lots of people worry about prepositions when they're speaking or talking about dates in English, whether it be British or American, and it's very easy. You've got one to remember, it's on. So, when I talk about a date, I say the meeting is on the 5th of July. My birthday is on the 12th of April. We have an appointment on the 30th. It's always on, on a date, okay? The same as if you say on Friday or on Monday or on Tuesday. It's the same concept. You're specif specifying a particular day. So when you use the date, it's the same as specifying a day. So you use on for, for both. So there are also special dates in the English language that we use um, the name of the day. We don't actually use the date. Everybody knows what date it is, but you don't say this. So for example, we have here Christmas Day. Everybody knows that Christmas Day is the 25th of December, okay? And the same with New Year's Day. Everybody knows this is the 1st of January, all right? So actually, people will use these terms and you know which one to say. For example, if you don't particularly know what day Halloween is on, like me, I never get it right and my kids get very annoyed about this, but Halloween is on and I'm learning again for the first time, 31st of October. For ages I thought it was 28th of October. I don't know why. So yes, so if you say Halloween and you're not sure of the date, you can just say Halloween. Everybody knows what you mean. And actually, Valentine's Day, the 14th of February, the same. Okay, so just be aware that some dates and some days have a name rather than a date. And if you use it, that's fine. And when you use your preposition, you still use on, on Christmas Day, on New Year's Day. Okay? So when we talk about historical dates, we typically split it into two. So we might say something, for example, 1066, which was the famous Battle of Hastings. Okay, 1066 is how we put it, and 1945 is how we would put it. Now, 2020 is also the way when we're talking about dates after 2020. But between 20, uh, 2000 and 2010, we have a choice. Now we can say, for example, for this one, we can say 2001 or we can say 2001. It depends which one you want to say. So for example, um, this one, 2010, we can either say 2010 or 2010. Now people say it however they wish. And actually I wouldn't say that it was either British or American. It just kind of happens the way it happened. So people just say what they feel or what was the last time they, what was the last thing they, they heard for example. Um, what is important, what's quite interesting, is that in British English, when we say this in a certain way, so when we say 2001, we actually have the and there. So we say 2001. But I think in American English, they say 2001 or 2010. But we will always say 2010. So remember, this and is quite important in British English when we say, even if it's just a mm, 2001, 2010. It's always there. So when you're writing uh, dates in a sentence, and this is kind of important thing you need to know, that you need to make sure that you follow a few basic rules. So she was born on the 8th of May. Now, when you're writing in a sentence, that is, you need to make sure you do use the on the. Remember we said before that when we write a date, we don't have to put the, but not when we're writing it as a, as a, detached entity from everything else but when it's part of a proper sentence you must use on the okay and also make sure that you capitalize your month always must be capitalized doesn't matter what month it is but it has to have a capital letter at the beginning and if you're putting a date the comma needs to be there in this sentence especially okay so there are occasions when you don't need to. For example, if, it's the, if the year is in a slightly different position, but with this, when the, the year comes after the date, it must have a little comma before just to make that pause so it's easier to say. Have a look here. The concert will be held on the 15th of August. So again, we have the same and we have the of as well. I've kind of missed that before. Very important that you have the of, okay? Sometimes when you write, you can miss this, but I think when you're doing something formally, it's an important letter, just make sure you put it in. It's possible not to have it there, but I think it shows 
you have to know the rules to break the rules, I guess, but it, the best thing to do is to do it like this, and then you won't make any mistakes and you won't give any wrong impressions, because the format of how you're writing dates is something that people always watch, so make sure you get things right. Okay, we moved to London on the 1st of March 2015, same rule. We have this little comma here, and again, on the and of, all included, very important. Write like this and you will look very professional. So just as an extension of what we were talking about in the last slide, when you're writing formal letters and formal documents, you have to make sure that you get your, your date format correct. Now, if it's in a sentence, as I mentioned in the last slide, you will have, for example, now this date would be the 24th of September, or let's just do it properly, on the 24th, and then we have of September. But when you're writing it on a letter or document, those don't exist. They're in the head of the reader. So I write it like this, 24th September 2023, but I say the 24th of September 2023 in my head. So this is how you write it, and that's how the person reading it will say it or will read it. The same with the 1st of January 2024, I write 1st January 2024, I write 15th October 2022, but I say in my head, or the reader says in the head, the 15th of October 2022, or the 1st of January 2024. You see what happens, so when you're writing it formally in a letter, you don't need to write all these prepositions and the articles, because it all is in the head of the reader. It's kind of a clever trick. Common mistakes when using dates in English is when you use the American format in the British context. So, for example, people are expecting you to say day, month, year, but actually you end up saying month, day, year. Now, you can imagine that there's going to be some crossover and confusion with that. You might even end up with a meeting on the wrong day. So, make sure when you use your, you say your dates or you write your dates in the abbreviated form, in British English that you use, so it's day, month, and year. So, for example, instead of writing 07-04-2023 for the 4th of July, like the Americans would, then we write 04-07-2023. 04 July, the, the date, 07 July and 2023. Otherwise, you could end up with somebody turning up to the meeting three months ahead. So before we just tell you about the last thing you need to know, remember everything that we've done today is up there on the I and also under the video on mobile or tablet. And on there you have your test and you'll also have uh, all the slides we've looked at so you can go through them again and practice with the video if you want as well. So you've got everything you need. So what's important is that you do not omit the ordinals because in American English they do. So for example, this is not correct. You must have... Remember, we talked about the four. So we've got this S T R D N D and T H. Okay, the four. Make sure you put these in, because because we have the date, the number of the date before the month. You have to have it there. Now the Americans actually write, for example, March twenty-one, and it's fine. You can say that. They don't have to say. They don't have to use the ordinal. In fact, they don't always use them, but we do. And that's why we need to put them in. Okay, be sure to click this video so you can do your progress test and you can find out how your English is doing. And that's all for today. We've had a great time and we've looked at all these dates and you've been given some really important and useful ways in order to use dates so you look professional and so you don't cause confusion in a British English environment with using American styles or the wrong style. So, Hopefully it's been very good for you and hopefully you go away to write the most wonderful dates in the world. So we'll see you soon and um, my name's Dan, this is ispeakspokespoken.com.